Thanks everyone for joining us. My name is Dan Koshi. I'm the executive director for automotive grade Linux. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome everyone to our inaugural, very first embedded uh, open source summit here in Prague. Um, just so everyone knows, so embedded open source summit was conceptualized as basically a superset of the old embedded Linux conference, but also include mini summits from all of the different embedded verticals such as uh, Zephyr, uh, Automotive Grade Linux, Embedded IoT Summit, uh, the Safety Critical Software Summit, and the LF Energy Summit, and combine all of these into one dedicated embedded conference. And this is our first attempt at Linux Foundation to doing this, and we hope it's going to be uh, a big success and that we continue doing this uh, every year. So welcome to the inaugural EOSS. And also, at the same time, um, within EOSS, we have the Automotive Linux Summit Europe, which is also the first time we've done this in Europe. Normally, Automotive Linux Summit has always been in Japan, and we will absolutely continue having uh, ALS in Japan, but um, this is our first mini-summit within uh, Europe in terms of Automotive Lin uh, Linux Summit. So welcome, everyone, to both of these. Uh, I'd like to start just by reminding everyone that uh, this entire event is uh, uh, subject to the Linux Foundation Code of Conduct. All attendees should be uh, feel welcome and included. And if you have any issue, please, please report it to any LF uh, staff member uh, immediately. And the Code of Conduct can be found online here. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank our sponsors, uh, especially our Diamond sponsors, Ant Micro, Google, Meta, and I've been told that Intel was a last minute uh, addition, uh, so thank you to those sponsors as well. And to all of our silver, bronze, and our partner sponsors. Uh, without your support, um, this would not be possible, so thank you very much. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the AGL Advisory Board for supporting uh, this uh, event in terms of the ALS sponsorship. And uh, here's the AGL Advisory Board for 2023, so thank you to them as well. Okay, with that out of the way, um, you know, the past three years have been really challenging. I'm so happy to see everyone here after COVID. Uh, even uh, Linux Foundation events had a, a little bit of a ramp up time. You know, the first one we had in Europe was maybe, you know, not as well as att attended as, as others, but now we're seeing people come back, people are attending. Uh, it's really good to see. Specifically, the automotive uh, sector was, you know, signif significantly, <coughs> excuse me, significantly impacted in the last three years. Uh, production lines were impacted, supply chains were impacted, uh, computer chip electronics were impacted, economic challenges, worldwide inflation, etc. But with all of this, I'm really, really proud to say that AGL is thriving. Uh, we're doing quite well. We really have not stopped working on everything that we said we would work on throughout the COVID period. Um, th thankfully, our members have continued supporting us financially and with contributions, and it's just been a really good time for AGL despite all of these uh, challenges. Um, we've had really strong membership growth in the past three years. We've had, uh, you know, small companies like Amazon, SoftMec, and Morelli, and Red Hat. I'm obviously kidding. Uh, you know, pretty big companies have joined in the past three years. So this is, a, you know, a testament to, you know, the progress that we're making uh, in the past three years. We have uh, 10 automotive manufacturers supporting the project with really good geographical uh, dispersion. Uh, Honda, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Suzuki, Toyota in uh, Japan. We have uh, Hyundai in South Korea, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen Group in, uh, in Europe, and SAIC uh, in China. So really good uh, dispersion. And it, it also, uh, this accounts for, if you count all the vehicles produced by these manufacturers, it's close to 50% of all vehicles worldwide. So not too bad. <laughs> uh, we also have at AGL over 150 member companies. If you're not a member, please uh, contact me later. We'd love to have you as a member and participating in our ecosystem. But why are we doing all of this? And why does AGL exist? And I want to recap, because I think I have a, a suspicion that uh, several of you in, in this room might be new and not uh, know the original goals of AGL. So I want to recap some of the 
things we started off by saying we wanted to do. And one of the key things that we've always said, the reason AGL exists, is that fragmentation hinders innovation. And what I mean by this is that um, if you've been involved at all in the automotive industry, you know that within a single automotive company, there's been a lot of fragmentation in terms of software. And the reason for this was the procurement process required OEMs to buy a box, a black box from a vendor, without really caring what software was inside. Really, they were saying, just meet all these specs, tick, tick, tick the boxes, and then we'll buy that box. And then the next version of the vehicle, we'll buy a different box. And this kept happening. So within individual car manufacturers, you had multiple operating systems. You had QNX, some Microsoft, some proprietary stuff, some RTOSs. And really, in my opinion, this is why the automotive industry fell behind the smartphone in terms of innovation and features. It's not because of a lack of processing power or the screen is too small or the battery is not big enough. In fact, the car is the perfect platform to be even better than a mobile phone. But yet, we were in this situation. And this is why AGL was created. AGL is the leading open source automotive so uh, software project in the world. Um, we're a nonprofit organization, of course. We're at Linux Foundation. You're all familiar with Linux Foundation. Uh, and we're focused 100% on innovation and vehicle software. The goal of AGL has always been to build a single platform for the whole industry. And what we mean by that is that we're not here to put tier ones out of business or put tier twos out of business or any kind of software supplier to the automotive industry. We're not here to put those companies out of business. Uh, we're actually here to build a single platform that is, we like to characterize as 70 to 80% of the starting point of our production project. And that are, that's all the bits that people, you know, really shouldn't care about that much because they're not differentiating and they're not innovative. And what I mean by that is like the, the, the kernel, the support for the board package, all the device drivers, that should be common to everyone. The middleware stacks for Bluetooth, you know, Wi-Fi, LTE, and, and uh, radio and things like that should be common to everyone. And the APIs for things like telephony, radio, navigation, um, all of these should be common to everyone. And that's the whole point of AGL is to build this platform that you have this starting point and you can build on and customize it and make it your own. And that has always been the reason AGL is, was created. And a very important point, if you're new to AGL, we've always said from day one that AGL is a code-first organization. And I think that resonates well with people in this room probably because of the type of organization or uh, type of uh, event this is. Um, we really believe that specifications lead to fragmentation. And what we mean by this is not that specs are bad, right? Specs, if you're documenting code, that's fine. But a specification that has something like a compliance program, what, will, what that will lead to, and we've seen it in other organizations, is that multiple vendors will claim to be compliant to the spec. You'll have vendor A, vendor B, vendor C claiming to be compliant to the spec. And when you look at the actual code, the code is different because proving compliance to a 100% degree is very, very, very difficult. And so we at AGL decided we don't want to end up in this situation where multiple vendors have multiple versions of AGL and we end up back to square one, which is my previous slide, where we have different versions of AGL everywhere. So at AGL, the only starting point is the AGL website. You go there, you download the latest stable version, that's the starting point, and you go from there. And at AGL, we're addressing everything in the vehicle. Um, infotainment is the first thing we focused on because that was kind of the pain point versus the smartphone. Um, and so that's the, the first thing we focused on, the very first release in 2016, uh, which I'll show you later. Um, but we also added uh, instrument cluster, HUD, and telematics. Telematics being, you know, the, the, the lower, uh, simpler version. And then lately, we're focusing on uh, functional safety, working with ELISA, which I'll talk about later. And ADAS is becoming a very, very hot topic uh, and a lot of companies are, are using AGL for ADAS applications and they want us to focus more and more on ADAS features, which I'll talk about in a little bit. In terms of 
where we stand, uh, I found this chart. This is not a chart we created. Uh, it's IHS Market created this chart. Um, we're actually leading Android by a significant amount in terms of um, uh, head unit operating system market share is what they're calling it. Um, and then uh, the, if you look at the upper uh, graph, that's the gray. That's actually an Android fork. These are individual companies, mostly used in China, to be honest, uh, that roll their own, have no Google support, no Google updates, no Google services. Uh, they use basically Android the way you would use AGL. It's, it's like you customize it and you're on your own. And then uh, if you look at the forecast, it looks like Android and AGL will become, you know, pretty close competitors in the near future. By 2027, uh, we'll probably have about uh, the same market share uh, in the industry. And then the final one, generic Linux, the reason that's going down, it's not because Linux is not good, it's because it's really a lot of companies are moving from Linux where they had started to AGL, which is a, obviously an, an automotive specific uh, distribution, so why not use it, right? <clears throat> but why choose AGL you know, and Linux over Android and other solutions? So whenever I show this chart, this is the first question I get asked, <laughs> and um, there's a lot of reasons. And first of all, healthy competition is good for everyone, and uh, my, my friends from Google, I think, would agree with this, and I don't want to offend anyone, because Google is a sponsor. <laughs> um, but uh, some car manufacturers, however, realize that owning the combined hardware and software solution has many benefits, kind of like the Apple model, right? They, they own everything end to end, they control the whole ecosystem around it. But more importantly, they want to be in control of their own software, their own roadmap, and their own release schedule. This is very, very important because they want to align their stuff with their production schedules. And, and anyone in the automotive industry knows that the production line is, is sacred, right? The SOP start date and when the production ends, all of this is controlled very, very tightly. And I've actually heard from car companies that are using Android, they're not happy with the fact that, you know, Android releases drop when they drop, they're not aligned with their production schedules. And that's, that's one of the pain points. And with AGL, because they control their own destiny, they, they can do what they want and, and, and decide when that schedule and when that drop will, will occur. But they also want to provide end-to-end -end services for their customers. So you hear a lot of companies announcing that they're building their own OS, you know, VW.OS and Mercedes-Benz.OS. Um, what they're actually building is an end-to-end -end service, right? They're building from the inside the car all the way to the cloud, providing end-to-end -end services to their customers. But to do that, they need to own the customer data. And one of the issues with using other solutions is potentially you're signing agreements that you're not owning the data and the data goes to another company. And so with AGL, we are not in the business of owning any data. And so all that data goes straight to the OEM and their services, and they are able to provide this end-to-end -end OS that companies are announcing. But even more importantly, I believe, is they don't want to become makers of metal boxes where someone else, some other technology company, provides all the technology inside, right? There's, there's, th th this model has happened in other industries where things have been commoditized to the point where uh, really it becomes just, uh, they become just a maker, like an ODM and a maker of a metal box and someone else provides all the technology. And so the car companies really don't want to fall into that, that pitfall. So this is why you choose AGL and, and uh, build your own. Okay, let me switch gears and talk about our uh, software releases. So at AGL, we name our releases UCB, stands for Unified Code Base. And again, the name was purposely chosen to show that we want to unify the industry on a single software platform. Um, we've been releasing two releases a year every year since 2016. Uh, <laughs> our releases are named after Fish, thanks to Walt Miner, our community manager. Uh, basically, he decides the uh, fish names every time, and the reason we did this is to be fun, and, you know, uh, Android was naming things after desserts, we decided let's name things after fishes, uh, and this is what we have. But the point of this chart is not to show you a bunch of, of fish, it's to show you that we, we have consistently released two releases every year. The date will change a little bit, but um, that's essentially what we do every year. 
Uh, the, uh, wow, that's a dancing octopus. <laughs> okay, I didn't know I did that. <laughs> um, uh, our latest release, Optimistic Octopus, uh, was released uh, February 27th, and uh, our next release will be Prickly Pike, uh, end of July. And we're announcing that the next release after that will be Quirky Quillback. Um, for full roadmap details, Walt Miner will be presenting after me uh, the entire AGL roadmap and, uh, and more details on all of these. Another thing we want to announce is uh, we have had for a long time several uh, AGL expert groups. Um, two of the most active expert groups have been the container and service mesh and virtualization. And what was recently decided is to merge these two because they were working on very similar concepts because the container and mesh group needs virtualization and, and vice versa, and vir virtualization, they need a solution uh, or a, a, an application to run. And so we decided to merge them into what's called the software-defined uh, vehicles expert group. And the vision of this new expert group, which we're announcing today, um, this was created recently, is to provide an open source project supporting an entire out-of-the-box solution for the cockpit. So that means support for everything in the cockpit in a very uh, deployable, virtualized environment, meaning IVI, cluster, HUD, telematics, even safe RTOSs. And the IVI can be AGL, it can be Android, it can be something else. The idea is that you can run these things easily, side by side, potentially on the same processor, which at AGL we've already been uh, showing for several years. The expert group lead is Jerry Zhao from Panasonic, so we want to thank him for uh, his support. And we already have several participating members, including Amazon AWS, Volkswagen, ARM, Virtual Open Systems, AVL, Tuxera, Lenaro, Open Synergy, Mera, Adit, Wipro, FEV, and Harman. And so this is just the beginning, and we already have all these supporters. So we would like to send a call out to any of you out there that are interested in participating in this. Uh, please get involved. Um, also, why, so why did we do this? So the AGL's uh, SDV uh, expert group is really addressing three leading automotive software trends. The first trend is that powerful SOCs and cockpit consolidation are happening. So we have SOCs that have you know, many cores, little cores, big cores, lots of cores, you know, many, you know, very powerful SOCs these days. Um, the problem is utilizing all those cores. And with the concept of cockpit consolidation and virtualization, you can you know, address this by running, like I said, IVI and uh, instrument cluster and even heads-up display and even maybe backseat uh, entertainment for the kids. Uh, you can run all this potentially on the same processor. And that's the vision going forward for this SDV group. And also, the... Uh, the growing software complexity and scale. AGL has over 100 million lines of code. Um, might be a surprise. <laughs> uh, and we need a way to have continuous updates, rapid security patches, et cetera, to manage all of this software. And really, the goal is to simplify this by having the ability to upgrade individual portions of those pieces uh, in a virtualized or containerized environment and really simplify uh, deployments and upgrades similar to what the IT industry do does, which is my next slide, which is lines are really blurring now between embedded cloud and IT. And we believe that the, this SDV concept will address this. And the idea is that the vehicle, I like to call it the cloudification of the vehicle. And this is really this, this trend that is happening in the industry and AGL and SDV are perfectly positioned to ad address this trend. Other uh, key uh, developments within AGL, um, we do have a reference hardware uh, system architecture uh, expert group. Um, we have AGL reference boards that are for sale, if, in case you didn't know. Uh, this is a, uh, might be a surprise because we are an open source software project, but um, the availability of hardware boards in the automotive industry is, is scarce, it's expensive, they're hard to find, you have to sign NDAs sometimes to get them. 
Um, so we decided to build them our, by ourselves with the assistance of Panasonic. And what it is, it's kind of a sandwich concept where we have a vehicle board, an audio and peripheral board, and then the controller board with the SOC, the SOC uh, chip. And the idea of this sandwich is that the SOC chip board can be replaced with another one with minimal impact on the software because AGL already runs on uh, that, that SOC. And so we already have the Renaissance SOC supported. We plan to add uh, Qualcomm uh, uh, soon. And you can find uh, details on our AGL Confluence page if you want to purchase uh, these development boards. Uh, another key development is that we're expanding development options by uh, porting AGL to AWS Graviton. This is a cloud-based uh, ARM64 based architecture which allows developers to uh, you know, t uh, develop and test uh, their AGL based software from anywhere in the world, from their home, from their office, uh, their lab, etc. And so this option will be available soon. And another uh, development is that we're fully uh, bought into Flutter. <laughs> so Flutter is an app and UI development toolkit, uh, which is a great alternative to Qt. Um, if you don't know the history, Flutter was an open source project by Google, and Toyota contributed, basically Toyota took it for their own uh, production, modified it, and, and did a lot of uh, automotive-specific uh, development with it, and contributed all of that back to AGL. And so AGL is the home of this now, and we've already heard that other uh, large OEMs uh, in Europe, for example, are considering using Flutter as well. So if two or three large OEMs suddenly, you know, in addition to Toyota, suddenly support Flutter, we believe that uh, this has the potential to become the industry de facto standard. And so we've already ported our apps from uh, Qt to Flutter, um, and you can actually see demos of these uh, that, that we've done. Uh, another thing is that I mentioned earlier, we're working very closely with the ELISA project. Um, ELISA, if you're not familiar with it, is working on uh, bringing Linux to safety critical standards. So it's not specifically for automotive, it's things like nuclear power plants, you know, trains, uh, aviation, anywhere you need safety uh, critical applications. Um, uh, I think Elisa actually had their, uh, their work group uh, meetings last week in Berlin. I haven't heard uh, the results of that. Um, but anyway, so AGL is obviously, uh, we're a member of Elisa, and we're uh, helping lead the automotive work group within Elisa, and hopefully bring our instrument cluster solution to a functional safety certification standard. Other strategy discussions within AGL recently, um, there's been a lot of debate within AGL of being working on production readiness versus innovative new features. Um, we have some OEMs, for example, that really want to focus on production quality and production readiness and things like that. And we have other members that really want to work on, no, let's add new features, let's work on software-defined vehicles. So this kind of strategy discussion is happening right now. And in fact, we're going to have uh, our AGL AMM in Tokyo in two weeks, and it'll be a big part of the discussion over there. Uh, and another big functionality, or a big development is that um, a lot of companies want us to work on ADAS features. I just uh, came from the uh, ADAS and autonom Autonomous Vehicle Conference in Stuttgart two weeks ago, and I spoke to a lot of companies that really want AGL to focus and work on ADAS features. So this is going to be something, again, the board and the, the AGL steering committee will be working on in the coming uh, weeks. And we will, you know, once we have the, the, you know, future strategies aligned, we will be announcing them, of course, on the mailing list. Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the events that we're going to be uh, attending. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, just uh, thank everyone that participated in the uh, CES 2023. This was our booth. Uh, this is a huge event for us. Uh, thanks to Scott for uh, helping us with the demo here. This is the booth. So this is a great event for uh, AGL, uh, whoops, uh, for AGL and the automotive industry. And we're going to be participating in 2024, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, we also recently completed our AGL all member meeting in Berlin. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone, for attending. We also participated in Embedded World. This is a great opportunity for small companies and large companies 
to participate in our booth. So if you're interested in this, let us know because we will participate next year. And of course, this week we're at EOSS here in Prague. So thanks for attending. Uh, our big event will, in two weeks will be uh, in Tokyo at the Hilton Tokyo Shinjuku, July 12th and 13th. So if you're an AGL member and would like to participate, you can register here. We'll also be participating in the, for the first time, the EdgeTech Automotive Software Conference in uh, Yokohama. So you can come see us there. And then uh, our, probably our biggest event of the year is Automotive Linux Summit in Tokyo. Uh, before COVID, the numbers were uh, over 2,000 people was at, uh, were attending this event. So this will be a great event for uh, uh, not just developers, but business development and for, you know, uh, companies uh, showing demos, etc. So join us at this event if you can. And then finally, CES 2024. Uh, we're going to be in the automotive technology area near Mercedes-Benz, Stellantis, Volkswagen, Hyundai, etc. So very good location. And again, if you want to participate, uh, you can submit a CFP and you can uh, join us there. And I included all of the events here in one chart in case someone wants to take a screen grab online or a photo. <laughs> <clears throat> And with that, um, I want to thank everyone for joining us here at the Embedded Open Source Summit inaugural event and at our um, uh, inaugural uh, Automotive Linux Summit Europe. So thanks very much, uh, everyone, for joining us. And please stay uh, around for my colleague, Walt Miner. He's going to give us a complete update on AGL roadmap and features. So thanks very much. <laughs>